Algebra 3, we're in Lesson 5. The stuff that this covers is exponents and radicals, complex numbers, okay, areas of similar geometric figures, and diagonals of rectangular solids. So it covers a ton of information. So, I mean, in fact, one, two, three, four pages worth of notes in there before you ever get to the problem set. So we're going to try to cover this just kind of question by question. This very first one here, we're going to get exponents and radicals uh, kind of all combined into this. Now, I still think that probably a good chunk of this is review, okay? But it just really depends upon how much you remember, okay? Okay, so if you've got that pulled up, we're going to deal with one thing at a time. For instance, we have the cubed root of x cubed times y to the ninth. I want to simplify that. So basically what ends up happening is whenever I have exponents under a radical, I divide those exponents by the root. Okay, so it's 3 divided by 3 and 9 divided by 3. Correct? Alright, so we should get x to the first, y to the third. Now, they had numbers that were sitting outside over here. We had x and y squared, or x to the first y squared. Well, now that these things are out, I have x and y squared here. I can simplify that, right? I've got first and first, three and two. What do I do with exponents whenever I'm multiplying bases? I add them, very good. All right, so one and one is two, so we have x squared. Uh, three and two is five. So we got x squared y to the fifth. Okay, we're all good there. And that's my numerator. Right? And the numerator uh, acts as a grouping symbol. So I can do that all together first. Well, I'm going to work from top to bottom. So even though I haven't drawn up the whole question here, hopefully we still understand this. I'm going to try to do the denominator in red over here and then bring it all back together. We have, okay, we've got a root. It is x to the sixth and y to the eighth. All right, now here's one of those situations. Over here on our left-hand side, we knew what our root was. Do we know what our root is on the right-hand side? It's 2. Okay, not 1, but 2. All right, so I simplify x to the 6th to be what? x to the 3rd and y to the 4th. Have I lost anybody there? Okay, we all understood that as we went. Okay, now outside of the radical, we have parentheses x, y, to the negative fourth. All right? What are the exponents to the x and the y? No, no, no. What are they as they are right now? They're one and one, right? Now, whenever I take an exponent to an exponent, what do I do with those exponent values? Multiply. So one and one times negative four is x to the negative four and y to the negative 4. Now all of this is multiplication, which means I'm going to take same bases. What am I going to do with their exponents? Add them. So my x's are 3 and negative 4, so I get x to the what? Negative first and y to the 0, which means do I even need it anymore? No, because y to the 0 is equivalent to 1. All right, so I'm left with this. All right, we can bring that solution down here. So I got x to the negative first down below. Can I simplify this any further? Yes. yes. What do I want to do? Do I want to bring x squared down or x to the first up? x to the first up. So I got x squared. What happens to the exponent as it moves across the division bar? Becomes positive and I get y to the fifth. What do I want to do with the exponents of my x's? Add them together. All right. My final answer is what? y to the fifth. x cubed y to the fifth. Let me check my handy dandy little answer key here. x cubed y to the fifth is my answer. This is question number one. Okay? So as you watch the video, you can go back and kind of hopefully follow that level of work on down through there. All right, number, number two. Number two, we're dealing with complex numbers, complex numbers, uh, imaginary numbers is another word for this. Okay, so I'll write, uh, I'm going to write this up in sections. Okay, so we have radical three times negative radical three 
times negative radical 3. Okay? Now, the radical negative 3 is an imaginary or complex number. And if you don't remember this from Algebra 2, hopefully you do, is that the square root of negative 1 equals i. Does that ring a bell? Okay, so what I have uh, here with this radical negative 3 is essentially this is square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1, right? Or the square root of 3i, okay? So I can rewrite that that way, correct? Okay, now I'm going to erase this so that I have space to actually work it out. So if you want to write that down, do so now. I'll give you like 5, 4, 3, 2. Does anybody still need it, Katie? Are you still working on getting it written? Okay, got it. Okay, so we understand that whenever we have a negative radical that we can rewrite it as a positive radical with an I on the outside, correct? Okay, so let's rewrite this set. Well, that eraser was bigger than I thought it was. Okay. All right, so I have radical 3 times radical 3i times radical 3i. Okay? So let's deal with our radical 3i's first. What's radical 3 times radical 3? No. No. Okay, radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9, right? What's the square root of 9? 3. So anytime I take a radical value times the exact same radical value, I will get that number as a whole. Okay? Okay, it may take a couple of steps for you to understand that, but all right, so I have radical 3 times 3i what? i squared. Okay, so what does i squared equal? Negative 1. Okay, because square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, so that, because what you got to remember is that i is not the negative square root of negative 1. Okay, this is still technically positive, it's just complex. Okay, so positive times positive is a positive, but I... In that, I get rid of the radical. I'm left what was inside the radical, which is negative 1. You follow me? Okay. Okay. So, I can replace. I got radical 3, and now I squared is negative 1, right? So, this is 3 times negative 1. So, what's 3 times negative 1? Negative 3. So, now I have negative 3, radical 3. Okay? All right. All right. So we've got that. Now let's look at the next set. Plus negative radical 3, radical 3, negative radical 3. Does anybody notice any similarities between our second set and our first set? They're the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing, right? So why redo work we've already done? Okay? So. Because even though because this was plus, it's still going to be what? Minus, minus 3 radical 3. Okay, eventually what we can do is we can simplify that. What would that be? What's negative 3 radical 3 minus 3 radical 3? Remember that radicals act like variables, so it's this, basically the same as saying negative 3x minus 3x. Negative 6 radical 3. Okay. All right. And in our last set, okay, that is, can I erase this information over here? I, I suggest putting that somewhere where you can keep it because you might have to, might forget. Okay. Uh, so don't just put it in your notes if you're keeping notes. Uh, don't put it on like your homework sheet um, because if that's the only place that you write it, you'll lose it. Okay. All right, and then our last set is plus negative radical 3 times radical 27. All right, well, we already know what negative radical 3 is. What does that simplify to? Radical 3i. Now let's look at radical 27. Can I simplify that? Okay, what will it divide by? 3 
9, 3, and 3. So what's that simplify to? 3 radical 3. Okay? Now, radical 3 times radical 3 is what? Right? Imagine that as... Okay, let's do this first. What's 1 times 3? 3. And what's radical 3 times radical 3? Three? 3. And I'm left with an I, right? So what's 3 times 3? So I'm left with 9I, correct? Okay. Double check here. Is it positive? Okay. Plus 9I is my answer. Does... Huh? Yes. Yep. It would be negative 1i, but yes. Okay? All right. Hopefully, maybe even splitting it up into different colors so you can see those sections kind of helps divide the work a little bit. So I'm not losing where I'm headed. Number three. Okay, number three. All right. Uh, this kind of goes back to a little bit some stuff kind of like question number one, we want to write the answer as a simple fraction with all exponents positive, right? That That's a big part there at the end. We want to make sure our all exponents are positive. So we'll move things back and forth across as we need to. So they're starting us off with a to the negative first plus b cubed, a to the negative two over a to the negative one b to the fourth. Okay, the number one mistake that people will make with this is they'll, they'll go ahead and they'll try to move the a up or the a down or the b up or the b down, right? We can't actually do that. The reason why is because of this plus sign. Now, if this was all multiplication in the numerator, I could move things freely up and down, up and down, up and down, right? But because there's a plus there, these operations are not the same. Which means I actually have to split this into two separate equations. Okay? So as I split this, what I'm saying is that I have a to the negative first over a to the negative first b to the fourth. Now I have all multiplication, right? Plus b cubed a to the negative second over a to the negative first b to the fourth. Are these two things, the red and the blue, are they equivalent to each other? Yes, they have a common denominator. I could combine them and put them together. Okay, but I can't move things across the division bar with a plus or minus, basically any other. I can't have plus or minus in that numerator position and move things up and down. Okay, now can I move things up and down on the left-hand side of my red equation? Yes. yes. All right, what would you do? I'd move this, yeah, move that A up. What's that going to end up happening, though? They're going to cancel, right? Because I'm going to get A to the negative first and A to the positive first. I'm going to get A to the zero, which is 1, which is leaving me with 1 over B to the fourth. Okay? All right, let's come over here to our other equation. What would you do here? Okay, we're going to move A to the negative 2 down. And what? b to the third down. All right, so that looks like I'm going to be left with 1, right? Because i got nothing left on top. Okay, I took negative 1 and I added 2 to it, so I have a to the what? a to the first. I took 4 and I subtracted 3, so I have b to the first. Okay? All right. This looks like something where... Here's the funny thing. Sometimes my notes are from like three years ago where I didn't know the easiest way of doing things. And so I was like, went through like some super duper complex way of trying to solve a question. Okay. All right. So we're not quite done with this. All right. We've got, let's, I'm going to rewrite it so that I can kind of see it. One over B to the fourth plus uh, one over AB. Okay, now I have two fractions. What do I need to do in order to get them together? Common denominator, right? And what did we say the easiest way to do that was, if it wasn't obvious? Multiply by the others, right? So I'm going to multiply left by AB, AB, B4, 
B4. Okay, so what do I wind up with in the numerator on the left hand side? AB over looks like AB to the fifth. That's what I should get across, right? Plus what? What's in the over here on the right, top right? B to the fourth. So I get AB plus B to the fourth over AB to the fifth. Let's check and see. I got a totally separate answer here. Somehow I got A plus B to the third over B to the fourth. Oh. Okay, I understand why. What do all of these terms have? I'm, I'm just coming back, and so, you know, my brain's a little rusty. What do all the terms have? 1B. They all have 1B. So I have A plus B cubed over... Right? Somehow I still have an A down here where this is telling me I shouldn't, but for now we're going to hold on to that. Okay? A plus B cubed over AB to the fourth. Okay, unless I can see where I've made a mistake somewhere else. Okay, for now we're going to hold on to that. Okay? If I figure out where I made my mistake later, I'll correct it. Okay? Well, let's, for now, for sake of time, let's keep moving. All right. All right, number four. Some of the stuff is going to repeat. So, number four, but it is a little bit different form. So, 2i to the seventh plus 4i to the fifth plus 3i to the fourth plus 4. Okay, what I'm going to show you here is expansion in the hopes of making it make more sense later on. So 2i to the 7th. What I'm going to do is I'm going to i, i. Okay, there's two i's. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, remember, the i squared, every two sets of i's is worth negative 1, right? So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, right? Times negative 1 is now negative 1, right? All right, so I have 2 times negative 1, which is with an I left over, right? Okay, here's something else you might want to remember is that, remember, this was I, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, and that's 4I. So I to the 4th, as a quick reference, is positive 1. Okay? So if we have 4 to the 5th, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? So that should be 4 times 1, times i, right? So plus 4i. Okay? Now, we already know what i to the fourth is, right? Yeah. It's 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. No i's, right? We didn't have any remaining i's. Plus 4. All right, now we want to take our like terms and combine them. So we're actually going to put our complex numbers at the end. So that we'll have 7 plus 2i. Okay, was that easier than we thought it was going to be? Okay. All right, that was what, question number four? Okay, I've got 10 minutes. I will probably use all of our time, okay, because I think you guys need to see as many of these as you can. All right, let's see, what is this, five? Five. Um, let's see, we have 4i. Minus 4 times i plus 2. Okay. What does this look like we would do? Foil. Foil. And that's what we're going to do. But we're going to have to remember the rules as we go. 4i times 1i. What is that? 4i squared. What is i squared? No? Negative 1. So what's 4 times negative 1? Negative 4. Okay. I am saying this so that I don't have to write it down so we get there, okay? So try to follow along. If I'm going too fast, this is a place where you need to stop me, say slow down, repeat what you just said. Okay, so we have our first, okay? Our next, uh, let's see, we've got first inner, right? Okay, so that's negative 4 times i. That should be pretty easy, right? That's negative 4i. 
inner, okay, outer, uh, negative 4 times 2, negative 8, and uh, let's see, our last 4i times 2 plus 8i, right? Okay, combine like terms, uh, we've got negative 4, negative 8, which is negative 12, okay, and negative 4 plus negative, or sorry, negative 4i, so we should get what? Plus 4i. And there is a reason that we do this in this order, but I'm not going to describe that to you right now. Okay, just know that it should go uh, constant and then complex. Okay, because if you get into the habit of doing it this way, you won't have to break the habit later on. Okay, all right, number six. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to skip number six uh, because it's, it's one, one, it's time consuming, and two, it, takes upon what we've already done in number two and along with a little bit of what we've done in number four. Do you want to see it? No? Okay. Um, which one do you want to see between um, seven, eight, nine, or ten? Ten. Okay. Number ten. I feel like I have less time this year than I've had in years past. Ten. All right, the air, okay, you're going to feel kind of silly about picking this one, but it's fine. The area of a regular octagon is 25 centimeters squared. Okay. Uh, the area of a regular, uh, with the area of the regular octagon with sides four times as large. Okay, what is, uh, okay. If it's, so, You're, you're talking about a ratio here, okay? The area of a regular octagon is 25 centimeters squared. I'm trying to get my head wrapped around this here for a second. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. You got 25 and something that's four times as large, right? Yeah. So if the area, let's, basically, if you're talking about four to one, okay, and this is 25, what is that? But here's the problem, is that this is a ratio. So if your ratio is four to one, and we're talking about area, you have to square it. So your ratio becomes 16 to 1. So instead of 4 to 1, when we're talking about area, we use 16 to 1. So you're taking 16 times 25. 400. So your area is 400 centimeters squared. You're doing pretty much the same thing for number 9. Okay. If you guys have questions, you get stuck on your homework over the weekend. Uh, you guys do know that you can email me, right? Okay, send me a picture of the question if you can. All right, screenshot. I don't guess you probably can screenshot. Uh, well, not with your Algebra 3 book. So anyway, so if you can take a picture, and I know that you guys can do that, uh, I'll try to get back to you and help you out.